Over to you. Good evening to everyone who's joining the call tonight. This is the Kusashio's Meet the Management series. It's the very first for the year, so welcome to it. And thank you for joining us. I'm Dawazo Kumalo, a continental business and finance content creator. I'm also a Kusashio problem solver, focusing on business development and content strategy. Now, if you joined us last year, you would know that we engaged with the executive team of some of South Africa's leading small cap businesses that are listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. But this year, we're changing the tone a little bit and paying our attention into the venture capital space by having engaging conversations with top management at those companies. And we trust these sessions will be of great value for small business owners looking for financing opportunities to scale their businesses. Now, over the next 45 minutes or so, we'll be getting to know Endeavor South Africa, leading the high impact entrepreneurship movements around the world, Endeavor was founded on the belief that job creation, innovation, and overall prosperity flourishes where there is robust support for high impact entrepreneurs. And to help me, to help me paint this picture is Alison Collier, Managing Director at Endeavor South Africa. Alison has close to 20 years experience in strategy and business development in Africa, Europe and Asia, with first-hand experience in establishing global offices for multinationals, expanding startups from South Africa into global markets, and raising capital funding into to finance growth. Thank you so much for joining us once again, Alison. Great. Thanks for having me. Wonderful to be here. And uh, venture capital, I love this topic. <laughs> now, before we jump into it, Alison, I just want to quickly run through um, the house calls for tonight. The session has been broken up into two, which will allow for the delegates joining us tonight to get in some of their questions. Um, so if you have any questions as we kick off the conversation, do slot it into the chat, just put in your name, your business name, and your question, and our name will make sure that I get those, and Alison and I can engage them during that break. Um, and with that, Alison, I think let's jump right in to warm things up endeavor boasts more than 20 years in business um, across 40 markets globally and the firm considers itself a borderless trust-based global community bound by shared values with one of those being entrepreneur first Alison, give us a little bit of insights into what exactly that means and what you consider a high impact endeavor entrepreneur. Sure, great. And I, and I think the sort of the word almost says it all, especially, you know, describing endeavor as entrepreneur first. So endeavor, let me maybe go to why it was originally set up or what was the purpose that that endeavor was set up globally. So there were um, a handful of individuals that were in, um, in the US in New York, and they saw an incredible amount of entre entrepreneurial um, businesses, actually in the South American markets in Brazil. And this was in the late 90s, early 2000s. And these businesses had created solutions that were really perfectly positioned for the global market, so for the US market and for the European market. But, for whatever, but given that they were located in Brazil, they just didn't have the right contacts and connections into the US markets, into the large um, European markets to break into those markets. So Endeavor has really been set up to actively assist and promote bridging that gap between highly scalable entrepreneurs who've got fantastic solutions for the global market from emerging markets and bring those solutions and connect those entrepreneurs into and build the bridges into the larger markets where they can really drive their revenue growth um, and the value of their business. And why is Endeavor Entrepreneur First? Well, it's a, it's a network of trust. And so all of the mentoring that happens is, is on a pro bono basis. I mean, I can go through a little bit of the caliber of the individuals in the mentor network, but globally, um, there are more than 5,000 mentors. Here in South Africa, Endeavor was set up by Adrian Gore, the founder of Discovery, um, David Frankel, who's set, who runs and, and is a, a part, the managing partner and founder collective, which is one of the most successful seed investors globally in the, um, in the space. Um, and then the likes of Isaac Shangwe, um, Paul Harris, among many others. And then when we look to our, say, global board or who set up Endeavor internationally, it was set up by um, Linda Rottenberg and the global board is individuals like Reid Hoffman, 
who's the co-founder of LinkedIn. We've got VPs from Facebook's um, global board and also um, VPs from, from leading VC firms like General Atlantic and General Partners. So it's really an incredibly high caliber set of mentors and all of them are doing this work pro bono. And likewise, all the entrepreneurs who go through the selection process and are selected to join Endeavor, passing our international selection panel, they likewise, one of the criteria is that they will choose to give back and mentor up and coming entrepreneurs. So to create this flywheel uh, of positive um, impact in, the, in their local communities, in these emerging markets where they're setting up their businesses. Mm. I now, can talk through a little bit more about the criteria, but I think that's coming later on yes, how we decide for the, which businesses join. Definitely, definitely, Alison. And before we started the conversation, um, we were ch chatting before the call and you did say that, you know, Africa is actually a very small part right now of the venture capital space globally. So I think let's zone in a little bit into South Africa and just you know, unpack a little bit how Endeavor has driven entrepreneurial growth and job creation in South Africa. What's, what are those specific sectors that you do focus on? And what are some of the investor partners that you do have, um, you know, in comparison sure. to how we are comparing maybe continentally and globally? All right. Great question. So maybe I can start just first, like what's happening in the space in South Africa right now? Um, and then we can go on to the um, investor network. But I see you brought up the slide of the investor network. Let me just start there then. So here in South Africa, we work with a combination of partners. Many of them um, you know, are um, mentors who are in our network from, from the business side. And then also we've got the um, investor side. So just first starting with the mentor side here in South Africa, we've got close to 200 mentors. Who are the individuals that are in our mentor network here in South Africa? They're really leaders in their industry, business-wise. So who chairs our board today at Endeavor? Herman Bosman, who's the CEO of RMI. Um, then I want to say we're very fortunate about the CEOs of many of um, top South Africa businesses. So Vukani from Accenture, Ajen from EY, um, Gordon Little, who heads up um, FNB um, Business Banking. He sits on our board too. Barry Swartzberg is there, one of the co-founders of Discovery. And then we've also got exceptional entrepreneurs. So Melvin, um, who's the co-founder of Go One, Go One is an ed tech business that's a unicorn. He's, I want to say, mid thirties. So have to have achieved this at your in your mid thirties, be living in South Africa is an exceptional um, to for him and his um, and his co-founders to have built a business that's now worth over a billion dollars. But mm -hmm. that's the caliber of the network that we sit with here in South Africa, and we also have many of the Endeavor entrepreneurs who now could be alumni. They also very much part of our network and giving back to the up and coming entrepreneurs. And then if we look sort of more, more broadly, um, so what, is, what do we have internationally? A similar set of mentors that sit in all these 40 markets that we, we operate with, all of whom are, you know, offer their, their services as and when needed. And then secondly is on the venture capital side. So who are the partners that we work with here in South Africa? I wanna say, I think probably many of the individuals on the call are familiar with these names. We do lots of um, work together with Alan Gray, with the team you're speaking with next week, Kalon, um, Venture Partners. Mm -hmm. We work with Clive and their team frequently. Um, likewise, the other teams you would have heard of, RMI, um, RMB, then um, Knife Capital, 40i, Klaasani. And then if we talk more broadly in Africa, we do a lot of work with CRE and Partech. Um, Africa Invest, um, who've invested in aerobotics. Um, Lateral Capital also works Pan-Africa. Um, and then I think what really sets um, Endeavor's network apart compared to many of the, the other sort of accelerators or VCs that's in South Africa is because we are a global organization started in New York, we've got really solid partnerships and we're working with the top VCs globally for many years, many of them 10 over 15 years. Um, and who are these teams? You know, it's Sequoia, Axel, Andreessen Howard's General Atlantic, um, Greylock Partners, I mean, the list goes on. In the UK, it's Behringer, um, Balderton. And so really the, the top VC firms internationally who are there to support the later stage rounds when you really are um, looking to drive your business um, globally. Mm. 
Alison, let's kind of get into the nuts and bolts a little bit into your harvest fund too. Um, what size is the fund? Who do you fund? Mm. And kind of what investment strategy do you take and the exposure limits? Sure. So with the Harvest Fund, I mean, we, we only set this fund up um, in February of last year. So we've been, it, we've, we ran a pilot fund before that, but I want to say this Harvest Fund, it's really a first of its kind fund for Africa. This Harvest Fund, it follows very similar principles to what we've applied in our global endeavor fund, which is the Global Catalyst Fund, which is, has got a track record for 10 years plus. Um, so what, what is this fund? This fund is a rules-based fund that we invest into the Endeavor entrepreneurs in our South Africa portfolio that have gone through our selection process. So this fund, it's a, it's a co-investment fund. We, we don't set price. We always look to support the entrepreneur to find the right strategic VC to lead the round. And then we'll come in behind that particular um, VC and you know, therefore just take the price and take the terms that are negotiated by the, by the leading VC. So because of that, because we don't do the active due diligence in the fund per se, we've already completed our due diligence through the selection process of that team joining Endeavor, which takes anything from nine months up to two years, sometimes three or four. Um, and so there's a really extensive due diligence piece of work that happens, but it doesn't happen within the fund. So the fund runs incredibly efficiently and it's been really effective. We have raised sort of twice as much capital as what we've expected to date. We've completed twice, twice as many deals as what we thought we would complete. So we've, over this past year alone, we've made 10 investments. Um, we thought we'd be tracking at sort of five or six by this stage. So one of the most active funds in the South Africa market. Um, and I want to say what's been really encouraging is to see that all of the, uh, just the strength of the leading VCs who have led each of the rounds that we've followed. So just, you know, we've gone into rounds like Go One's round, which was um, led by SoftBank and then Blue Cloud Ventures, both New York based um, VCs. Then likewise in, in Flex Club, we again followed an international VC, a US based VC. Then there are some of the transactions like we invested into Senmark there, we followed Cologne, who you're gonna be speaking to next week. And likewise, there are a number of other transactions where we followed Alan Gray, uh, and then again, there, there are more in additional international VCs who we um, who we followed into these rounds. So what are the what is the check that we write? We write um, on the top end, we write checks of 10 million rand. And then for entrepreneurs that are at an earlier stage, we'll write a check of 5 million rand. And the reason for this is just because right now the fund size it's only 160 million rand or it is 160 million rand. We look like we're gonna close in two months time, probably closer to 200 million. And what we want to make sure is that the fund has at least 15 to 20 investments. So you get the right diversification to be able to ensure that you've got the right risk profile so that you have um, a handful of the businesses that really perform. Um, and also always in VC, the, the, there's less certainty in the, in the forecast. Um, and so you, you need to have that spread. We've also, you know, the, it's the normal 80-20, so 80% of the carry goes back to LPs, 20% goes to the GP. And this is another point that differentiates our fund. That 20% carry that is earned by effectively by the fund, that goes straight back into Endeavor South Africa, which is our NGO, which is there to support additional high growth, medium-sized entrepreneurs that have got global solutions um, that we can accelerate their growth and therefore drive more job creation and drive more revenue growth, which will stimulate the South African economy. So it's, a, it's very much a commercial first fund, but it's got this um, large impact angle, but that's just a, um, that's secondary to, to the fund. Mm -hmm. Alison, talking about diversification um, to really get that impact, Endeavor already has some very interesting or, or an interesting portfolio of entrepreneurs, um, many that are emerging leaders really in their sectors, including Sipsild, Spark Schools and Time Bank. And obviously a couple of days ago, you know, we heard the great news of Time Bank um, scaling their business to include a credit card offering, um, you know, for their markets. So 
who are some of your favorite startups to work with? Um, and kind of what are the things that you can take out that you would say, this is what other entrepreneurs should, should learn from them to be able to attract that funding or to drive that sure. growth? Sure. So I want to say when you say which are which are the favorite businesses that I that I like to work with, I actually want to tell you just all of them. All of these teams are driving such incredible growth. Their revenue numbers are absolutely stunning, their revenue growth numbers. And also their ability to raise capital from the private market is incredibly impressive. So I want to say thanks for sharing on the screen. You can see these are the sort of the 30 endeavor entrepreneurs um, in our portfolio. We work with an additional 70 businesses on top of this. Um, so from this, and I want to say very visually, if you just leave it on the screen, you can, if you cast your eye across um, the, the two sectors which are biggest, the fintech and the SaaS sectors. So, you know, and I want to say that makes sense given where South Africa is and what South Africa's point of differentiation is as a country or a market compared to the rest of Africa. So we've got some incredibly large and sophisticated corporates in South Africa. So South Africa therefore lends itself to be a great a market for enterprise software solutions or SaaS businesses to set up here, test their solutions with a large South Africa corporates, which play on a global scale. And then you can leverage this, this you know, highly skilled dev team and solution that you have already tested in the local market and, and sell that through to, to US-based customers without, you know, with only a handful of your team needing to move or be sitting in the US or one of these more expensive markets and you can leverage the operating team that's sitting in South Africa. So I wanna say that is just an exceptional model that the enterprise uh, software solution businesses in this space are able to, to leverage and generate very interesting returns because of that. And then the other point I wanted to highlight before going into a handful of the businesses is in the FinTech space, it's incredibly exciting to see the offerings that the fintech businesses are making to the lower end of the market. So if you call out teams like, like what you just did, like Time Bank, Time Bank is here to serve the middle income and the, low, and the lower income groups, as well as now it's extending to be offer more premium um, services too. But Hello Pesa, Time Bank, MFS Africa, Ozo, Merchant Capital, all of those businesses are firmly reducing the transaction costs for middle to lower income um, individuals and putting more money back in their pockets and really just expanding the pie for those for that particular sector of consumers. And it's incredible to see the growth that these businesses are achieving because they're do, just doing that so, so well. So I wanna say it's, it's a very exciting time um, to be playing in that FinTech space, but I also don't wanna take anything away from, from Intersect, who's just raised from, from Axel that closed at the end of yeah. last year, one of the top, um, fintech SaaS businesses uh, globally. So, anyway, but coming back to your question, so which of these entrepreneurs do we do we as Endeavor really love serving? I want to say what is is remarkable is the these businesses also just on average they're making anywhere between fifty million rand to fifty million rand to to a billion plus in annual revenue. They're growing at sort of an average of 63% across the portfolio. In addition, their job creation is running close to 20 to 30% on average a year. And this is the same that these businesses have been achieving the last four years. What we've mm -hmm. seen specifically in the last year is an in incredible increase in the rate at which these businesses are raising capital from the private markets. So, you know, last year, if we just look at those 30 businesses, they raised together sort of 2 billion. Oh, sorry, two years ago, and then last year in 2021, they raised close to 6 billion. So a threefold increase. And mm. I want to say this is driven because the market is seeing the opportunity that these businesses have to offer and the, these solutions that really are, are better um, solutions, more effective, more efficient um, in meeting the, the needs of the consumers or businesses. And the and venture capital is buying into that. Um, so it's it's just wonderful to see the investment that these businesses are driving and the growth that they are driving. So the entrepreneurs that we love to serve are entrepreneurs who've got these fantastically big ideas that are absolutely passionate about driving their businesses growth, both here in South Africa and internationally, mm -hmm. and also really clear on areas where they're seeking advice from others who have gone before them, who can then mentor them and assist them. So it's 
it makes it very easy to service a business or to support a business if they're very clear on what their needs are and what they're looking for. And if they've got open ears and they're willing to listen. Um, yeah. it, it's very difficult to serve a business if they're not clear on what they're looking for and what they need, and then they actually don't really you know, come prepared to meetings and pay attention. So I know it sounds very basic, but it, it really is. So who are those entrepreneurs that we love to serve? It's ones with these incredibly big ideas that are looking to change the world, that actually are changing the world with the way they're going about it. And they, are, they work incredibly hard and they are so keen to learn from others that have gone before them, but also give back. To the next, mm. uh, to the next generation of of entrepreneurs. Mm. Alison, and I want to say that the teams you called out, Sweep Salt, Spark Skills, Time Bank, that they're, they're all an absolute pleasure to work with, yeah, along those, with the others. Those are so. the exciting <laughs> ones for me. Um, I have a daughter in Spark School, so when I saw that, I was like, oh, I even learned something interesting today. Alison, we're almost at the end of our first segment, so before we head off to the questions, our last question for this segment is. Looking at, you know, the country and the globe kind of slowly coming out of those COVID-19 mm. jitters and, mm. you know, small business kind of scaling up again. What do you see, um, you know, just in the pipeline and the kind of quality of entrepreneurs that we'll be seeing and, you know, the pipeline in the near future? Sure. So I want to say for, for the SMEs out there that have got tech-enabled businesses that you're developing solutions that one will work in South Africa, but also you're thinking forward and saying, hey, this is something that actually will is a is a solution that's not just needed by the South Africa consumers or the South, South Africa businesses, but global businesses. I think you couldn't be setting up your business at a better time. Why? Because the market is really looking for additional tech-enabled services where they and they're becoming much more digitally savvy. Um, and very comfortable with working with teams remotely. So we've seen a much higher instance of, I mean, all of the majority of the businesses in the portfolio that we work with in this tech-enabled space, they've outperformed in comparison to what their revenue forecasts are. Why? Because there's excess demand. Um, I'm not saying it's easy. It's You've got to be working incredibly hard and you've got to be partnering with the right teams to, to do that and set up. But where are we seeing the growth? Like which areas exactly are we seeing most of the um, of the development happening? It's very much in the fintech space. Mm. Talking to what we spoke about earlier, specifically in payments, um, there's such a huge still opportunity and need in the middle and lower end uh, of the market. One in South Africa, two across Africa in that space. Um, so teams like MFS Africa, with what they've been doing, they they then you know, partnering with, partnering with others. I mean, on this chart, you're looking now at businesses that we work with that are slightly earlier stage than the Endeavor entrepreneurs. These are all teams that are in our pipeline. Mama Money is another great example of a remittance business that is just growing at an incredible pace, um, reducing the, the cost of, of transferring money for those, you know, the, the middle and lower income areas. The other topics that I wanted to call out here on the on the SaaS play is teams like Snowed and Aura, who are involved in um, cybersecurity and then Aura more on the ground security. They're a platform for private security services. And those businesses, they've you know, already expanded into a number of international markets. And I wanna say over the course of the last two, two years, I wanna say if you had to wind back the clock like three or four years ago, it probably would have taken the teams many more years to get into so many international markets. Why? Just because the, um, the markets, the, the demand side wasn't there. People weren't that comfortable to do business remotely, whereas now it's much more so the case. So we're seeing um, great move. It's mostly in the in here in South Africa. It's in the enterprise software solution businesses, in the in the fintech and in insure tech. We're seeing a big growth coming in retail and consumer tech, and I think that's going to continue. I mean, one cart's on the page here. They were acquired by MassMart, so they're no longer founder led. So we we sadly don't work with them anymore. But another good example, you know, are teams like Jabu and Yellow, who are um, solving that last mile delivery problem um, in the different Southern African markets and doing exceptionally well um, at that. And then a health tech, um, I think that it's early days for the health tech sector. There's not as much consumer spend in that space yet, but it's coming. But Envision IT that's started by Jay Shinaidu, they have got an amazing AI solution which supports 
doctors, radiologists, doesn't matter if they're here in South Africa, anywhere in the world, to give early diagnosis of different lung diseases. And it doesn't matter what country you're in, you know, these different diseases look the same. So they've got an incredibly scalable um, solution. And they're, you know, engaging now with some of the largest international and radiologist um, equipment suppliers globally. And it, I mean, very exciting times. And we can get onto EdTech. Their teams are not on this page, but Explore AI. Um, Sean Dipnell and his team, they, they're doing incredible work with upskilling thousands of South African youth every year with, um, with data science and digital skills and sort of negating the need for those individuals to go to university, which means they only spend one year in training and then they've got you know, the right skills to land a great dev job, which will more than pay for you know, the, the tuition that they had the prior year. Which, and then they're selling these capabilities and solutions through to the international markets. And so you, you're sitting training individuals in soft currency in South African RAND, and then you're able to sell the, the data science skill set through to businesses that are operating out of the UK or the US. And we just, that labor arbitrage is, is going to be there for a long time. And we're very fortunate that we've got, we don't have enough, but we've got very skilled individuals um, once the training has happened. Mm. So well, lots going on across the sectors. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's a lot going on. And I think what I keep hearing is fintech, fintech, fintech. And as we get into the um, questions, delegates, if you do have any questions, please do pop them in into the chat. So I'm just going to quickly check if we do have some questions coming in. Um, I do have a question here, Alison, from Morwick Peterson, who is a partner for Rhythmical Entertainment and Mo Motion Pictures. It is in the television production and content creation space. And his question question is, if you are in the more traditional spaces or the more traditional sectors, such as your production, television, and so on, but there are elements of tech um, in your business, how would you advise those kind of business owners to more position themselves for funding? As it seems, a lot of venture capital funders um, and, under, and other investors are focusing specifically in the fintech space. Mm, or in the tech space. So I want to say, great question. And I think what is really important is to know that if you wanting to have venture capital funding, there's a very specific um, type of business and also revenue growth and scale and you know, ability for your business to scale. And so if your business doesn't possess those particular factors, my advice would be look in, look in the right pockets where that funding is going to match the profile of your business. So you know, with venture capital, what are they looking for? Venture capital funds are looking for growth between 50% and 100% a year. They're looking for you to reinvest, you know, all of that capital, you know, whatever excess revenue you make to reinvest that into your business to drive your revenue line even faster. It's not about turning a positive EBITDA, especially not in the first three to five years, for sure. It's about growing your revenue line as fast as possible. So I'd say, Merck, when you think about your business, you know, if that is something that, you know, if you had to put your goal down, that's exactly what you want to do in your business. And then you're looking to exit through a sale or through an IPO, then I would say venture capital is for you. Or else you say, actually, you know, our business, we need to grow our business at 20%, 25% a year, or 10% a year. That's the right pace for our particular business because of what we're doing. And then there definitely are pools of capital that are available for that profile. It's just not venture capital. So I would just say to you, don't go after the venture capital mm -hmm. funders because that won't match your profile. Um, Funders in the more traditional space will be the right space for you to go to. And also there are some very interesting um, debt opportunities. And mm. I want to say debt, you're not giving up ownership of your business. You as the, as the business owner, you're maintaining ownership of your business. So if your cash flows of your business can afford or make sense for raising debt, it's always a cheap option for the, for the business. So I think it depends how much tax in your business depends how fast you're looking to grow that revenue line of your business. And I always suggest to, to take debt first because then you're not giving up ownership if you can afford it. But mm. it's not an option for everyone. Sometimes yeah. you have to go for equity. Yeah. 
And then I have another question here from um, Soku CBS coming in via WhatsApp. Um, and she's from iAfrica.com. And her question is, we've seen a lot of venture capital funding activity on the continent, um, but it always seems that it is more established startups or startups with support from the likes of Europe and the United States. What can African startups that are born and bred on the continent do to either collaborate together, um, make use of regulations such as inter-Africa trade um, to be able to better access venture capital funding? Sure, so I also do, do want to say there's there's enormous amount of work that I want to say we as founders, so when I was as an entrepreneur, that you are con continuously doing, building your network um, for funders for the various stages of your business. So when you're really at the earlier stages at a business here, whether it's in South Africa, you know, Southern Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, you know, you need to know who are the right angel investors, who are those people that you know in your network or are one or two degrees, you know away from you that you really need to start getting to know because they've got the ability to support you with equity funding as you as you start out. Um, and then I do want to just encourage you, you know, come along to discussions like the one we're having this evening. You know, you'll get to hear of different angel investors or venture capital businesses that are sitting here in South Africa or are based in Africa that are interested in funding and really they've, they've got lots of capital right now. They're all very keen to invest, but it's highly competitive to, to actually raise the funding from these VCs. So just because they're well funded um, across Africa doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy to, to access that, to basically get them over the line. But join discussions like this, you know, get into discussions with different accelerators who are in your area um, and also accelerators that focus on your particular vertical. So I, I'm not sure... Exactly, uh, iAfrica.com, exactly the, the geographies that you cover, like what size your business is, what your growth rate is, how big your team is. But, you know, if you share all that type of thing, I can maybe steer you into the right direction of which accelerator or incubator could start assisting you or a list of the relevant funders who are at that right stage and have the mandate to focus on exactly the space that you, that you play in. But very open, like drop me an email share your pitch deck with me and I can also just give you some pointers on who to go and, and speak to. But I think the point is really just, you know, us all as individuals, we need to get out there and network, get linked up with the local, uh, with accelerators or incubators in your area, ask this question, that, that exactly the one that you've asked, and you'll be surprised at how many people will then steer you in the right direction. Yeah. And Alison, just linking to that question, I think the last one we'll leave before we carry on. Um, it's from Swissiso. I don't have a company name here, but he's basically asking, linking it to incubation. Is there really value for a startup or a small business to go through incubation? Because it seems that a lot of startups and SMEs actually don't get the value promised when going through an incubation pro um, program, trying to then get themselves ready for venture capital funding. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, I want to say you hear very mixed feedback from, from businesses and also from incubators on, on maybe the success of their program. I, I do find it difficult when the incubate, the accelerator or the incubator is only sort of three months in length, because honestly, businesses take years to grow. And at the early stage, it's specifically, there's much more sort of rolling up your sleeves and very deep work that happens with setting up your business's strategy, you know, figuring out a couple of products, testing them and then refining them. And before you really identify your product market fit. Endeavor, we work with the businesses a little bit later, once they've already got their product market fit, once it's very clear what, you know, what runway that they've got and what sort of market they're choosing to, to go after. So I must say, I'm not an expert at the very early stage. I do want to say, though, that with the incubators and accelerators, of course, speak to entrepreneurs who've been through them. Those are yeah. the guys that will tell you exactly, you know, feedback that they've received and then think about their businesses versus your business and see if what they're sharing rings true or, or doesn't and then make the decision for yourself. But I always say, speak to entrepreneurs who've been through the program. That's, that's on offer. You know, then learn and think about that for yourself. And I do think that the programs need to be at a minimum a year, if not two years. 
um, to really make a big difference. And it's hard because the incubators are often funded by different organizations. And typically that funding is only to do a short product for a particular particular scope. So I'm also not mm -hmm. sort of saying the incubator, they, everyone's trying hard. I just do think try and go for an accelerator or incubator that's got a longer period of time, but speak to entrepreneurs that have been through those programs before and hear from them directly the feedback and then make the decision for yourself. Great. Um, we don't have any questions right now. It looks so I think we can carry on. And if we do have a little bit of time left at the end of the session, then we will um, get to those questions. Alison, getting a little technical now, let's unpack that vetting process that you spoke about um, at the top of the session. So sure. why is there that six to 18 month selection process with both the local oh. and international selection process dubbed best of breed? Can you take us through that vetting process that Endeavor has for all its entrepreneurs? Sure. So I think probably the easiest way to explain the selection process that um, that Endeavor goes through, both in the, the local area, like where the business was originally founded, and then also internationally, always bringing in um, experts who are based in the territories where this business is looking to expand to. So I think the best way we can, ex the best way I can explain it is those selection panels are very similar to investment committees, where they're making decisions on investing in a business. So what we do is the, the panels are put together uh, a combination of the mentors that we have in our network. And there are always three different um, hats that we make sure, you know, there are always six mentors that are on each panel. And there's the investor hat. So there's someone, you know, who, who is very familiar with VC and investing in exactly that, that vertical of business um, and at that stage. Then we also always have entrepreneurs who have been there and done it and are, are typically, you know, three to anything from five to 10 years ahead of the entrepreneur who is being going through the panel. So they know, you know, what are the different elements that you need to have as an entrepreneur to, to succeed and also in that particular same vertical. And then the third piece we have are business leaders. So who know and understand the market landscape um, in the particular space where that entrepreneur is playing. So you've got the, you know, someone who knows and understands business from a corporate angle, you've got entrepreneurs who sort of been there and done it, and then you've got an investor. And then what are the different, uh, they effectively look through the entire, in the entire business across all of the standard business um, metrics. So what's the, you know, who's the team? What is the, what is the product? What's the go-to market? What's the proof of, you know, the evidence, you know, where's the moat around the business? How are they going to be able to protect that moat? is this business actually scalable and are they scaling quickly? And is the team like 5,000% committed to yeah. driving the growth of this business now and into the future? And very importantly, like is the founder or that founding team, are they keen to support the next generation of entrepreneurs? And also are they actually willing to hear advice from, mm. from others? Because, you know, if you, if you not don't have that, it's not really helpful to be part of the Endeavor network because the introductions that and the mentoring that will be shared with you, you won't listen to. So when we know that that business ticks all those boxes, the, the selection panel has to vote unanimously. And then that happens here in South Africa. And then again, it happens um, internationally. Often in these selection panels, the, because of these this, the expertise that sit in the panel, there's often a wonderful amount of advice on, you know, tweak your growth plan like this. And then by the way, you'll, you'll be able to tap into that market or, you know, if you think about your unit economics in this manner, not that, then you'll have a much more scalable financial model. And so it doesn't take just one month to relook at some of the areas in your growth strategy or to fundamentally like overhaul some of the unit economics and how you are scaling out your business. That takes time. So that's the reason why we've got this, I want to say it's anything from in the shortest stage, usually nine months, and it extends out, could be two or three years to put these various elements of your business in place. So you actually are at that point where you are at an inflection point. And if you just, you know, very crudely said, if you just put a whole lot more money in the business, your business revenue, your revenue of your business will just um, accelerate dramatically. So the reason for that duration is to work with the business if, if some of those elements are still being um, refined through our mental network to have them all in place to get that business 
at the mm. point where I want to say they can take checks from the like of likes of SoftBank and Tencent and APIS and all these incredible international VCs and then deliver fantastic revenue growth on the back of that. Mm. Now, Alison, um, it's kind of two questions back to back that are two pronged. I'm going to put it as one. One of the biggest Archie's um, heel for venture capital firms when it comes to supporting entrepreneurs to scale is the return on investment. Um, now, obviously, you would have gone through the process to make sure that, you know, the likelihood of seeing that return is quite high. Um, but tell mm. us the kind of results, obviously, you've touched on your time packs and so on, that South African entrepreneurs and startups are delivering when compared to kind of what is happening internationally or the performance internationally and as well on the continent. No, I want to say a great question. And and the return on investment, we we're developing our track record now. So it it's not we're not in a position yet as South Africa to say we've got an exceptional track record in venture capital. Why? Because we haven't had that many years where there have been enough investments in this venture capital space in Southern Africa for us to, to then look to these examples. We're starting to get there. So I want to say we definitely need to do more with sharing the stories of the successes. And I think um, what's what for us is very positive at Endeavor when we look at and you'll start you'll see something in the press next week and one of the bigger programs which we work with the SASME fund is we're starting to share more deliberately the revenue growth the job creation and the capital that these teams are attracting because those are all really strong signals of the valuation appreciation that these businesses will deliver and therefore the returns on investment but I want to say there aren't right now that many examples of you know, here was an exit, you know, it was 3x, 4x, 10x, 100x. We've got a handful of them, but, and I want to say, fortunately, they're, be, they're coming more and more frequently. But what's amazing to see is the big jump in, um, I wouldn't say it's not amazing, it's probably just because the state of where the market's at, but the big jump in the amount of capital that these um, businesses are able to attract. And if you're able to attract that type of capital, it means that then you have the ability to invest in the right team to set yourself up to drive your revenue line at a much faster pace than what you could have done two or three years ago where you just weren't able to track the, those size checks. So I think we at the at the start of really seeing the revenue growth of these businesses accelerate and also to see the quantum of businesses that are moving, that are entrepreneurs that are starting to set up businesses and the experienced individuals, like people who've had a job in corporate or been working overseas or, you know, done a, set up a few businesses already and now this is their third. And they, they're really incredibly skilled at what they do and they're choosing the entrepreneurial route because they can see that it, mm. there's, there's money to be made there and they're also great solutions. So, yeah, I think here yeah, you, you sh you're sharing the slide that I was referring to. I mean, to me, if the top sort of 30 businesses we work with, they're delivering an average revenue growth rate of 63%. It's, you know, and likewise, I think more importantly, they're, they're raising an enormous amount of capital from the private markets. Private capital is only gonna come and invest in businesses that they think they're gonna generate a very interesting return on that business. So it's, again, it's a signal, it's not the actual return, but more and more we're starting to um, see messages of exits being celebrated. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, RMI and, and NASPAS, they went into a transaction together and they exited Luno and they did very well from that. Um, there, and then we can look, go one, um, that Melvin de Berger set up with his Australian co-founder, Andrew Barnes, that mm -hmm. was invested in middle of last year, led by SoftBank and EdTech business that became a unicorn. It's not purely a South African business, but they're becoming much closer to him. Um, mm -hmm. And... I think we've seen very successful raises from the businesses that were originally founded in South Africa. And then, you know, two years or five years time, we'll start having more of the stories of the exits. And then we can answer your ROI question with hard facts. <laughs> Alison, and on the flip side, um, you know, before we need to wait that year, on the flip side, for entrepreneurs, the challenge is often affording um, you know, the support and affording um, the funds that might come, that come with their own cost and so on, um, you know, mm. which becomes a real challenge for entrepreneurs trying to chase this funding. Could you a little bit um, mm. just unpack the costs and services that Endeavor has for their entrepreneurs? 
Sure. So, so I want to say with Endeavor, the um, what what we do to you and Endeavor is an NGO in itself. So we not and the so we're not here as a as sort of an active VC mm -hmm. that is looking to to sort of you know create. Um, I want to say with that with the where the carry returns fall to the the team. No, so the fund that we've got, it's just channeled straight back into Endeavor South Africa, where we just mm -hmm. employ more portfolio managers to support more businesses to drive the mm -hmm. overall growth. So how does it work? We actually have got an um, one, a very generous and committed board who contribute financially to have their board seat. So we're very grateful for that. But I want to say the majority of our funding comes from South Africa's corporates. Um, so the SASME fund, we've got a partnership with them where we work with them on that local select on the selection panels, where which that selection process we spoke about. So the SASME fund, we've got a, a really good um, project that they they finance and fund. Likewise, we run a similar project and program with F and B, but for much earlier stage tech enabled entrepreneurs who are black founder led, South Africa black founder led, and then we run another program with the JSC, which focuses on medium sized businesses that have got you know, in their future, and uh, they're keen to IPO. But what the JSC is saying is these medium-sized tech-enabled businesses, because they are already of a medium size, if we can assist and accelerate their growth, we'll have a much higher impact on job creation and revenue growth for the country because, you know, we're moving businesses from being 50 million or 100 million to be 100 million, 200 million, rather than moving businesses from one or 2 million to be two or three, which will employ a handful of people, whereas the businesses that are obviously 200 million will be employing hundreds. So it's we so we've got a number of um, corporate programs that we run, which we generate our revenue from. And then what is remarkable is our all of the mentors that work in our network are 100% pro bono, and so all of the mentoring that comes is pro bono. So mm -hmm. teams when they when they work with Endeavor, there's a very minimal sort of donation that they give of a you know a couple of thousand rand um, for for the year. But the services that you receive, I mean, I don't know, when I was sitting the other side of the table and we were receiving the, the services from Endeavor and, and other networks, you know, to get the right introduction to the VC that you're able to raise, you know, 100 million rand from, or mm. to get the right introduction to, you know, a party that you can then have a contract for for three or four years, which is going to drive your revenue line. How do you put a value on that? And mm. what's what Endeavor is able to offer through its, its own network and you know, of entrepreneurs and, and mentors is really warm introductions from this network um, to really just incredible individuals or teams that can potentially drive your business forward, you know, whether it's access to capital or access to markets or just assisting you with setting up your business in the right manner so you can scale dramatically. So that's, yeah, I want to say without the Without the generosity of our board and without the corporate partners or this amazing set of pro bono mentors that are in our network, we wouldn't be able to, you know, offer the services that we do at this, you know, very discounted, um, discounted offering. Mm. Alison, we have a couple of minutes left of the session. So as my final closing question, I know you kind of dropped a couple of gems across the entire session of the whole 45 minutes today. But just as a final word of advice or some tips that you can give entrepreneurs and startups oh. right there, out there who have kind of survived through COVID, survived through the tough times, continuing to grow their business, what would you say they need to do in this year to really get themselves a step closer to getting some funding? So first, I want to say well done. If you've survived through COVID and all these other challenges that have been thrown in front of you, like well done. You've got probably like incredible resilience and perseverance, and that's probably one of the um, characteristics you need in spades to be a great entrepreneur. So first off, I just want to say like well done. They're they're not yeah they're entrepreneurs. It's it's a lonely journey. So two things that I really want to say, and both of them are quite simple, and and also very happy to talk more with other, other points, but I think these two are the best. Just build a great business and build a great business that you love and that you are completely passionate about and surround yourself with people that are better than you as you grow your business. And just, and then in that comment of surround yourself with people that are better than you, that's one in your team. And the second is the mentors that you surround yourself with. So 
there are always going to be people that have gone before you. And those individuals, I want to say that's something at Endeavor that really has struck me. It's almost the more the more senior or the more accomplished the, the person is in business or in investing, the more generously they give up their time to the up-and-coming entrepreneurs and teams to assist them with helping them also succeed. So never be afraid to ask. Just ask. Like, what's the worst thing that can happen? You'll get a no, or I can't speak to you, but which is the same place that you are now. So that in that surround yourself with, with people that are better than you, really just proactively go out there and build your network and never be afraid to ask. And, you know, what's the worst thing? You'll get a no, or I can't talk to you. And that, that means you're just in the same place where you are today. But there, you'll be surprised at how many people are happy and willing to assist you and give you introductions and, and help you out. But Come prepared, you know, don't let that person down who's making the introduction for you because that's, that's you know, you really do need to prepare, be prepared for whatever the, the meeting is or whatever the ask is that you're asking of these different individuals in your network. But you'll be rewarded if you, if you go about it that way. But the first thing is just build a great business, build a business you love. And then I want to say surround yourself with great people and it'll be amazing what you, what you can deliver. Mm. Well, we've unfortunately come to the end of our session. I guess time really flies when you are being informed and educated. Um, thank you so much once again, Alison. I don't see any other questions in the chat, but as stated, if you do have questions, please drop us an email, um, drop us a line. Arne has put our email in the chat and we'll definitely make sure to try and get those answers to you um, as best as we can. The playback facility will be available if you'd like to take another listen to the interview, I know sometimes when we kind of get too much information all at once, we miss some things and we need to simmer over it a little bit. Um, so the playback facility will be available. You can share that with your network as well. And if you'd like any more information on Endeavor, um, Ane once again has put up their websites in the chat. We'll also be sharing it in the week on all our social medias. Um, so do look out for that and drop us an email to connect as as Ellison had kind of hinted, we are chatting to Calon Venture Capital um, firm on the 22nd of February. I don't think you want to miss that. They're also doing some great stuff in the space. So do join us on the 22nd of February. Once again, thank you so much, Alison. Uh, it's a pleasure. And uh, thanks for this opportunity. Loved it. Thank you. Well, that's it for now. And I guess I will see you on the 22nd of February. Have a good evening, everyone. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>